So I am going through the garden and just doing a little bit of weeding. So even though I mulch the garden, we have this terrible grass, uh, centipede grass, Bermuda grass, and it doesn't seem to matter what you put down, there's always going to be a little bit of it coming through. But doing this thick straw mulch on top of the beds really reduces it. I mean, I really only have to come out here and do a bed maybe once a week or so. And even then, I'm more than halfway down this bed. It's only taken me a couple minutes to do it. Just here and there, I'll see some grass. Usually up where I have the plants or right at the very edge. And what happens is it comes up underneath the landscaping timbers. So it's not a big deal. Now, people have asked me if planting with straw, well, doesn't the straw grow? Sometimes, sometimes you get a little bit of it, but the fact of the matter is, usually when these seed pods, these heads, when they start to grow, they're generally going to be right on top of the straw. And often it's just in little clumps. If you want to, you can grab it, pull it out. I just throw it out into the grass. Or you can take that straw that's growing, grab all of it, flip it upside down, lay it back down, and now it has no light, it's not gonna grow. So it's really not that big of a deal. I don't worry about trying to find seed-free straw. Um, I've never seen it except in small packages and then it's got some sort of bonding agent in it. Um, no, I just, most of my garden here has been mulched with the straw bales that I had created the cold frame with. Uh, so it's just straw that was sitting out and you know, most of the garden was mulched with that, but I have more garden then I had bales from uh, the coal frame. So I just went ahead and picked up a couple more and that's what I use. It's, it's really not too much of an issue. But generally what I'll do is I'll just come out here and I'll do a bed. So I'll thoroughly, thoroughly weed this bed, except in the walkway because I forgot to put down the weed barrier before I put in the drip line system. So there's really, there's really gonna be no way for me to <clears throat> get all the grass out of the walkway, but that's all right. I'll just keep it mowed down. But I'll come out here and I'll thoroughly weed this one on both sides. And then maybe tomorrow I'll come out and I'll weed the next big row over there. And as I work my way down the row, I'll look at my, my plants. I'll see what we have going on. How are the tomatoes doing? Are there any pests that I need to deal with? And I can tell you right now, my beans are getting hit. They're getting hit with something. They don't look like they're on the verge of death, but something has definitely arrived. So since the sun is setting and it's getting a little bit later in the day. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some of my neem oil and pyrethrin mix and uh, spray down the beans. Everything else is looking good. I've got a million blossoms on these tomato plants. And so since the tomato plants are looking okay and I'm not really seeing anything on them, I'm not gonna spray them. I don't wanna spray anything that has blossoms if I don't have to because I want my garden to be bee friendly. And so my beans are definitely getting hit, so my beans will get sprayed. <clears throat> so here you can see my walkway. I was going to put some weed barrier down and then put the stones on top of it before I put the drip line system in and <laughs> I forgot. So I am, I mean, I'll never get all of this grass out at this point. So I'm just kind of doing the, uh, <laughs> the goat version of uh, 
trimming it down. And over there in that area, it's all of those zinnias. So I don't want to, I don't want to rip those out. Lovely zinnias, Persian carpet. Check out these purple Russian tomatoes. They have such a cool shape. I have never grown any tomatoes that look quite like that. My butternut squash is moving its way into the walkway. So I'm just going to kind of gently pick that up, move it back over into a safe zone so it doesn't get mowed on accident. I'm kind of wondering if you can grow butternut squash up on a trellis. So I think I need to look that up and see if that's a possibility because that would definitely save a little bit of space and a little bit of trouble with the butternut squash creeping into the walkway. And I wish you could smell how amazing this holy basil is. Oh, this Tulsi, it smells so good. It has this kind of a sweet fragrance to it. I love it. So generally, as I'm doing this, I'm just gonna throw the, the weeds out into the walkway. Most of the time, it's just grass or clover. If it's something super invasive or super nasty, like um, pigweed, which has these wicked, wicked thorns on it, I'm not gonna throw that out into the walkway because I don't want that to accidentally propagate or replant in the walkway. I will throw that into a bucket and just let it break down and die. Another option, really, for any of the weeds that you, that you pull out of your garden, whether it's grass or, or whatever it is, you remember when I talked about making comfrey tea? And I apologize, it's a little windy. Uh, post Christabel, or Christabel, or whatever the name of that tropical storm was. Uh, when you are making the comfrey tea, or even if you don't have comfrey, you can take the weeds, the plants that are growing in your garden, you can put them in a bucket of water, you can let them rot and ferment, and you can turn your weeds into fertilizer. So if you don't have access to comfrey, or if you've just planted comfrey and it's not big enough for you to chop down yet, ferment your weeds. Stick them in a bucket of water, let them rot a couple weeks, and use that. Do it the same way, do it a 50-50 uh, formula, half weed tea and half water, and water your plants with it. They will love it, and your weeds will feed your garden. So, a minute ago, I heard one of the one of the young chickens out there doing her little high-pitched, sort of distressed kind of call. So I went over to make sure everything was okay because every once in a while, one of those youngins will get outside of the, the fence because we don't have it charged right now. And, uh, so I wanted to go over and make sure she was okay. Well, it's the Polish chicken who was getting picked on there for a little bit. And so her poof on her head is still a little bit colored, a little bit stained. Has kind of a, a pinkish color to it. Well, she was just standing there and I honestly wonder if her, if her crest, if her poof, was making it hard for her to see how to get back into the coop. So I picked her up and I carried her back around and put her inside. Well, I was holding her and patting her and talking to her and I crouched down and I was just gonna let her jump off my lap. But instead of jumping off my lap, she laid down on my lap. Mm. 
You guys, let me just say, I have had chickens for many years. Not just here, but at other houses in the past. I have never, ever had a chicken that like cuddled or had that kind of pet-like personality. With the exception of Little Bit, when she was little, she loved to jump onto your hand. But only when she was little. She don't do that anymore. She quit doing that as soon as we brought her outside. Um, yeah. So I was, uh, I was tickled. That was so sweet. All right, so that is it for today. I am rapidly losing light and it looks like my garden time for tonight is just about over. So thanks for coming along with me as I weeded the garden and hanging out for a little while. My name is Constance from Cospalt and Cornbread. I'll talk to y'all next time.